this is episode 58 of Minecraft Down Under. What are we going to be doing today? Well, we're actually going to be starting on the trading hall for our main base, finally. Uh, I really want to start working on the name tags for an upcoming project. I really want to trade uh, with villagers for the name tags, um, so I really, really need to get the trading hall done. We've already completed a village uh, purifying station, we just need the other half of it, which is the actual trading hall itself. Now, I really don't have a clue where she's going to sit. She's probably going to be sitting um, second floor down, or, or I don't know. We'll figure that out soon. We'll figure that out soon. So last episode, we managed to complete the... Um, the fish tanks, and we've even got guardians, named guardians in them, so they don't despawn. As you can see, if you look really closely, you'll see the, the guardians sitting on the bottom of the tank looking around. and They're not very happy, but they're swimming around in our fish tanks, which is quite awesome. Um, there's one in this one, and this one, that one, and there should be one. In, yep, there's one in this one. We don't have one over there yet, but uh, we got plans for a, comp a, a competition in the, in the near future. So before we actually dive into a um, uh, before we dive into starting construction, I really, really, really want to do a quick wither uh, wither fight. I really want to get another beacon for this pyramid right here for today's project. So we're just gonna go go back down the mine shaft. Uh, I know I've already got a beacon over there, but I've got to get this wither fight done, or else these wither skulls are just gonna be sitting around and doing absolutely bugger all. So we're gonna go just kill it the easy way, go down the mine shaft and. Plomp one down, kill him. It's going to be pretty easy. Should be a real quick fight. Um, I, I actually did promise we would be killing uh, the Wither bosses like many different ways, but uh, yeah, well, I'm sort of in a rush today. Uh, yeah, so we. I know there is a lot of ways you can kill a Wither Wither boss. Um, you can fight it normally, which is meant to be on the surface, or you can fight it uh, near the bedrock on, on in the. Um, on top of the, uh, not on top, but near the top of the nether. Um, I just prefer to fight them in the mine shafts. They're actually quite, uh, quite, quite easy to fight down here. It should be, a, as I said, quick fight. I've got my milk, my bow, got all the resources. We're just going to go down a little bit so it's away from everything and doesn't destroy a metric butt ton of stuff. Now I'll do every single wither wither fight on camera. By the way, guys, just to. So, so beacons don't just start appearing out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, so here we'll be fine. This is oodles. So let's just create a nice little area for us to plomp one down. And we'll just get this started. There we go. That should be oodles. Um, we need our soul sands, which we'll get rid of the axe for now. Dum, and dum, and blom. And our three skulls, which I got over time, by the way. Um, we got I got one the other day, and I got I had I've been ha I've had two for quite some time now. And boom! All right, let's stand back, make sure we don't get really messed up. We'll wait for him to go boom. Come on, go boom, and we'll just start firing. Ouch. Whoa! I was withered already. Holy smokes! All right, get rid of that. All right, keep firing. Holy smokes, he's coming right for us. <laughs> I swear last time it was a lot easier. All right, he should be... Yeah, he's immune. Get out our sword. And he is... Down. All right, grab our star. He made a mess. Let's go ahead and drink some milk. Oh, sorry guys if that was a little bit loud. He is definitely a little bit loud. Where's my star? Yes, I got my star. Fantastic. I can go plomp that in a chest. Uh, just check if, the, if he if he made any, um, you know, showed any resources we could get. No, he didn't. Because I'm pretty sure last time I, he, yeah, iron was exposed last time. Just in case, just in case. Alright, let's run back, get this beacon up, and let's start on our uh, trading hall. Woohoo! Alrighty then, guys. I am back, and we're just going to plump the beacon on top of this bad boy, and get him all... Yep, that's all going good. We'll get this fired up into a haste to... Done. Alright, that's my second beacon. Alright, let's get off of this. 
Okay, so the reason why I put put the um, the pyramid in here or close to the base, because remember, we will be digging out a room in here. So, you know, crikey, it's going to be a metric butt-ton of work, of digging. So I'd rather have the haste 2 buff, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Holy smokes. So, okay, let's discuss where this trading hall is going to go. I had a rough idea of putting it behind the stairs. So, but that's going to sort of interfere with the crafting room because if we're going to put it behind the stairs, I'm going to I'm going to carve out one of the sides like this. Or there pos we could possibly do a dual side like a double hallway going into the to a, to no, well, I wouldn't say huge large because this is not going to be a mid, this is not going to be humongous trading hall. This is probably going to be a 10 15 cell at max, um, so, yeah, um, this is, um, um, but yeah, no, okay, we'll just do the three, we'll do the three, so we'll just get rid of this crafting table here, break all this, it's got, base is going to become a mess for a little bit, guys, well, it's actually still not complete, but it's going to become a mess for a little bit until we get this done, um, I don't even know how long the trading hall is going to be done for, now I have, um, so let's go ahead and just carve, how deep we want it to go into. So what we'll do first, we need to roughly, I suppose, mark it all out and then dig out a giant room. So I think we will cut across now. So I'll do the other side as well. Get rid of that. So three wide. Well, that's four wide, you fruit loop. Did I, I hope I didn't do this one four wide. No, one, two, three. Um, one, two, three. That's a whoopsie daisy by me. Grab that, we'll fix this up later, and we'll just carve this out. So, alright, uh, this this trading hall is going to be a tad different than the purifying station. Um, you're probably going to, you're definitely going to say, well, how is it going to be a little bit different? Well, I've, I've recently built a version 3 of the, the purifying station. So, we're going to use the version 3 of the pur purifying station now instead of the version 2, which we built last time. So, the version 3 is actually a little bit... Um, it's a little bit less resources. We, it doesn't require the piston up the top anymore. We can, we, we're going to go ahead and cut that out altogether. So what we'll do, how far do we want to go? We'll take it about here. We'll be, we'll be absolutely fine from here onwards. So we need to now work out how, um, all right. Remember to put torches down so we don't have nasties coming out the Yu Yang. So, we need to work out how wide this is going to be. I think I'm going to make it go about 5 to 10 in, depending. So, this would be this would be one block. Uh, that's three. We'll just do this. And then we'll count. Mm, that looks good. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, eight looks good to me. If I do eight on the other side, that's definitely more than 10 cells. Definitely more than 10 cells. So... Same on this side, just just do this. And that looks about right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that's perfect. All right, now we've found the sweet spot. Eight on eight on both sides, so we got a nice, um, perfect number there. Um, so as I was explaining, this is going to be version three of the pure uh, of the well, it is it is technically the purifying station, but uh, turned into a trading hall base as well. So this will be version three. Um, it, it's it takes out the piston. It's hard to explain without having it in front of me, so I can explain. Hey, what's different about it? Uh, but it is version three. Um, we do not need the double. We don't need the back and forwards hopper system as well, so we can eliminate that from the, the resource requirements, which is going to be good because um, all that sort of stuff takes takes place down in the purifying station. The purifying station is down under the floors over there, which we haven't even hooked up um, to any walkways or anything yet, which we got to do that. So, um, yeah, it have to be in front of me to explain, but um, yeah, so... We're going to do all the the sorting out of villages at the purifying station. So we so we cure a zombie, the zombie turns into a village, and the trades end up being completely useless. We just kill him there. It's only when the trades are good we send him off to the uh, to the, the the trading hall. That's how it's going to work. So we don't need a double pulse lava dispenser there anymore, which is going to be 
absolutely fantastic. I have to take it up high, but actually we need to do a little bit of investigation how high we're allowed to take this because um, this block here, you can't, you can't take that block. You can take that block down ways, but you cannot take out that block. Reason why? Underneath the carpet, I have poor man's lighting, cough data. Poor man's lighting, which is just pretty much... Uh, let see if I can show you guys. Where is it? What? There is poor... There, there's poor man, <laughs> poor man lighting right there. So, that's what I mean. I cannot... Uh, break that that block because it will break the torch and all there there every i think three four blocks is a torch underneath the carpet so there's it, there's, there's lighting it's lighting everything up you don't see it it's got poor more poor man's lighting i will eventually once we do start trading we can start replacing with glowstone finally but um, you break that block there if you broke break that layer all over here you're going to break every single torch underneath all that carpet and then you're going to have to redo it so we need to be really careful i think we can't reach up that high to be honest with you yeah we're definitely not going to be reaching up that high so i think we'll be right just do a quick test eh? so yeah no we will be right so it's we'll just dig up as far as we can reach so i'll just start on this hey torches data we're gonna have nasty spawning out the yu yang and we don't actually need that at all so yeah we can just go up as far as we can reach oh that is close anyway because there's there's it looks like there's dirt there and i know that where the poor man lighting is there is dirt so it looks like ooh, we're cutting it close but that's absolutely fantastic. It's probably we're probably digging this out too high, to be honest, because we, we don't need most of the crap that we had in the purifying station. As I said, we've got to strip out. We don't need the two hoppers anymore. We don't need the dispenser because we'll be doing that at the purifying station. This is the trading hall. This is a little different. And um, yeah, so let me get this all dug out, guys, so you don't have to listen to me yab on for the next. Uh, I've got I'm, I, how well, before I go how. How far do we want to take it back? That's the real question. Let's do some... Let's just do it right now. Um, it's going to be a little bit deep because you've got the redstone behind. So let's take it a little bit little bit far back. Not too far, I would say. Because say the trading halls are along here, right? That is still kind of thin. And this would be all redstone. So... I really, I would, I want at least a decent size room because it's, it's called a trading hall, so it's meant to be decent size room. I want the the base to be about here. That's a bit better. That is nice. Base all along the wall there, and we'll probably use chisel brick and all sorts of stuff in here. We can use because we're gonna make this one prettier than the purifying station. So yeah, I would say this far back. And then the rest is going to be for redstone. And we just need about 10 blocks back for that. So one, two, three. We'll just do this like we normally do. All right, about 10 blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. Perfect. That is just perfect. There we go. I just thought I heard my... Yeah, I'm hearing... Are you guys hearing that? I'm hearing the... um. I'm hearing the guardians shoot their little laser beams. Well, what are, what are you guys up to in here? I thought I was going to catch a sw squid spawn on camera. That would have been good. Look, look, there's there's an ink sack in there. So yes, the guardian was shooting at a squid in the water. I was waiting for that. I was so waiting for that. I wanted to show you guys. Um, it were it being a a a, um, a squid farm as well as a just a fish tank. <laughs> So that means, guess what, guys? We're going to have to put hoppers on the bottom of these fish tanks. <laughs> because look, can you see it? There's an ink sack inside. So this this guy did this guy here just killed a a a yeah a squid. That's awesome. Sorry, I just I got way off topic there, but I, I was waiting for something like that to happen. I really wanted to show you guys uh, uh, them killing some what's some colors all right i'm gonna get this dug out guys i'm gonna get this dug out there's a little bit of work to be done here oh 
Alrighty then guys, I am back and as you can see the room is finally dug out. It looks actually quite squared. So, I have a clean inventory, I went and grabbed a stack of string, I've repaired my pickaxe due to the fact that the room pretty much decimated that poor thing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next stage now. So we're going to be recycling a lot of those uh, resources that came from the original the the original purifying station. Remember, this is going to be a little bit different. So we do have leftover resources. I know that we do. We just got to hunt them down, which is unfortunate. So we've got some uh, torches in here. We've got comparators. We don't need comparators this time around. Which is fine. We need repeaters, though. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to hunt them all down, really. Uh, I know we've got tracks somewhere. Oh, here we go. We've got an activator rail. And we need the tripwire hooks. That Oh, we're lucky I brought some more string. I only got, only got two in there, so that's fine. We don't need the detector rail this time around, but we need the pistons, which is good. Uh, we need a bit of redstone. There we go. Grab some of those. Some powered rail to go along with it. Uh, minecart for the future, some glowstone, so a stack of that bad boy will be absolutely fine. Alright, I think, there we go, I think that's uh, that's all we need, right? We pr I'm probably missing some things, I'm probably missing some things. I need some more torches to be honest. Uh, oh, there we go, fantastic, 61, okay. I think we're definitely done. So we'll grab some stone brick because we were building the main structure out of stone brick. But when it comes to decoration, we're going to try to incorporate chisel brick, that stuff there, chisel brick, and probably a diorite or andesite. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we'll see. But that's the decoration. We just need the we need a cell built today. We need actually all the cells built today. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So. Alright, so let's go ahead and mark out the area where we're going to be working with first. I think that's probably the best idea. So let's go ahead and mark out, um, I think roughly about here we'll do absolutely fine. No, we'll go one more back here. So I think every two will be absolutely fine. So every two, one, two, one, two. So all these gaps here are the cells themselves. I'm just leaving a nice two gap because it does require it. There we go. Fantastic. There, look at that. I think that's absolutely, it's definitely, how many cells is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is eight cells. I really, really thought, to be honest with you guys, I, I thought this would be a tenner or even more, 12. But eight's okay. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I not wrapping it around the entire room? Remember the old trading hall? It was using water canals and I had it wrapped around the entire room. Um, every corner was utilized, all that good stuff. But this time around, we're using the 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 purifying station design wall this will be th version three and i'll show you why it's version three in a second um we're using rail tracks and ejection methods all right and remember two sides do not eject properly if you don't if you build it the if you build it the wrong way it won't eject properly there you go all right so if we went and i think only this direction and this direction work just fine but when you went when you build it over here or here it possibly won't eject and that's a bad thing this is exactly why i'm not building it all the way around the room we're just having it nice and flat like that a nice wall of villagers in their cells ready to trade all that good stuff okay there there is workarounds don't get me wrong i could sit down and probably design um some sort of water canal that ejects onto the other side and then water canals them into the into the the cell but you know i, I don't think it's not worth it it's not worth it Okay, so before I go ahead and get started on this uh, this design here, this version three, because this is different, and I'll explain. I'll explain as we're building it. Before we actually start, please, if you had trouble at all with the ejection in um, in the Blaze Farm, do not build this. I I know I said this before. But, you know, some people do skip videos and then watching this and they haven't seen the, the purifying station, which is, by the way, is built just down there. And you have to go back in the uh, in the MDU and find it. Um, but, yeah, if you had troubles with the, the Blaze Farm ejection, do not build this, please. You will have all sorts of problems. I have not designed a workaround system like I did for the Blaze Farm yet for this design. I will try and work on a version 4 in the, 4 in the future. Okay, now that said, let's go ahead and get started on a cell. Okay, so it's going to be pretty much the basic same old cell, but we're going to change a few things, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and build it up about three high, like I normally do. Remember, you can build it, you can build it um, 
a little bit lower actually. I just like to always build it up three high like that. Because I like to hide the glowstone and the string. I do not like that showing at all. So glowstone goes there like normal. But glowstone goes out by two this time here. Okay, glowstone goes out two. Normally, it's just a piece of glowstone there. So this is a little different. This is what I was talking about. This design is a little different than normal. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put those two on uh, we'll get rid of the axe for now two trip wire hooks like this and we're going to take a string and plump that across get that activated if i can there we go fantastic that is all fantastic keep building it up a little bit higher yeah as i said you can move this all down one it doesn't have to be this high but i like to build it this high so yeah all right whoa whoa that roof is way too close this is not good because the track has got to go along here. So, because we're hi we're currently hiding all the, um, oh, crikey, this is not good. Is it going to hit the poor man lighting? Can we scrape off one more? It looks like we can scrape off one more. Good, fantastic. Oh, we got to be so careful, guys. All right, we're pushing it. We're really pushing it right now. Okay, so we, we can scrape off one more. That's fantastic. Okay, so the track's going to be running along here. All right, so we're going to build this up now. This is where the villager is going to eject. All right, he's going to eject down there and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and put down the tracks right now. So we're going to take the activator rail and we're going to take the powered rail here. We're going to put the activator rail here and we're going to put some powered rail there. Normally, I have detector rails in here to power the activator rail. No, not even doing that this time. You know the pistons that go up here and all that stuff that extend the glass over the hole and no, we're cutting all that out this time. Literally cutting it all out. So let's go ahead and start working on the back. Let's go start working on the back. Alright, let's get down. Here we go. Ouch. Okay, so what we need to do now is get a get a Get some chicken in this. Mm -mm -mm. And we need to build a... We need to get up here and we need to build an RS null latch. Alright, so what we'll do is take some torches. Just it's exactly the same one I built for the last purifying station. No different. I'll even explain it again shortly. Just give me a sec. So, just... Uh, Alright, get rid of those two. And grab our repeaters. This is why we needed the repeaters. And we're going to put a repeater here, which is going to be powering this block there. And there's going to be a block on there. It's almost like a sideways U. There we go. We're going to take some redstone dust, put a piece of redstone dust here, put a piece of redstone dust here. Okay. Um, and a torch here. Fantastic. There you go. That there is an RS null latch. Okay. So what what's what's this RS null latch going to be doing? It's pretty much going to be controlling the activator rail up there it's going to be turning it off and on uh, uh, when we when, when when the villager drops drops down okay so what actually is going to happen is when the villager runs over the the um hang on a sec let me put let's let's put in this block here and let's put in this torch here which is currently turning on ouch crikey let's go up and i'll try explain everything so all right, so this torch now is turning on this activator rail. This activator rail controls uh, the ejection. So when this when this is on, it will eject. When this is off, it won't eject. See? So this is we're we're pretty much digital making all this digital because normally we have a piston here that goes over that pushes a glass block over the hole, not allowing any more more, more villagers to go down into the hole. But this time around, we're just we're controlling the activator rail this time. So when that activator rail turns off, not nothing can eject at this point. So we don't need a block over the hole anymore, okay? So there, that's a big change to this. That is definitely a big change. That's We're moving up. We're definitely moving up. Okay, so um, let me try and explain this now. I'm not really good at this, but I'm going to give this a shot anyway. Okay, so this is an RS null latch right here. This here, this is the the tripwire hook is powering this block. This is going to be powering this block. So as soon as, as soon as a villager drops over, drops down here, uh, runs over this string, and it's gonna you know trip trip off this uh trip off the trip the uh the hook. 
right? And it's going to power this block, which is going to turn off this torch, turning off the repeater, turning off the dust up there, which is going to allow this torch up there to turn on, which is going to power this piece of redstone dust up here, which is not going to allow this torch to turn back on again, you see? So, and that's obviously going to, when this is being powered, this is not going to this is going to turn that torch off. So I can even show you this thing is going to work right now. So even if I go throw a piece of, if I can get up, crikey. If I throw a piece of uh, stone brick in here, see how the activator rail just turned off? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So until we hit a switch down below, which we'll install shortly, which we reset the entire thing. And how you reset it is quite easy. You just pretty much put a put a button into here. So if you press a button, right, it turns off that torch, turning off this piece of redstone, and allowing this torch to turn back on, right? And then, you know, the cycle goes again. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. It just pretty much goes in the circle. So we've got a, we've got a set and a reset. That's pretty much it. That's it's pretty basic. Hopefully I hopefully you get that. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and hook in. Let's go ahead and hook in how we're going to reset the whole thing. Holy smokes, that's definitely getting more compact. Normally we have the two hoppers that are kissing right here. They that controls the that controls the uh, dispenser, the double pulse dispenser, but we don't need that this time around. That's actually going to be done down in the purifying station. This that's where we're going to sort out the villagers, kill them, um, purify the zombies, sort them out, then send them up here if they're any good to be traded with, etc., etc. But I do want a piston. This is why I grabbed the piss sticky pistons because this will be the only clunking thing that's going still. Um, so I I still I still want a piston in here because in the future, if I wanted to put a torch, you know, send them off to a torture dungeon, I can. Or I want to um, I want to build that recycler I was going to build a while ago. I can press a button, the piston with tracks, and sends them down to the torture dungeon or the recycler, whatever I decide to build in the future. So I'm going to have that installed anyway. That's going to be mandatory for this build. So let's go and invert this the signal off of this guy now. Which there we go. So that's inverted. There we go. Cell is set. Good stuff. All right, we need a button now. Let's go ahead and run back and craft. Uh, well, we can craft a whole stack of buttons if we want, but I'll still lose them. <laughs> oh, crikey. All right, I know we have plenty of stone in here. Crikey, we have a metric butt ton. There we go, stack of buttons. What a waste. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put a button in here now. Um, there we go button and put some um put some redstone here so now when we press the button the piston with tracks and drops lets the villager drop down now obviously when there's no villager in here you press the button the villager goes you want the whole cell to reset allowing another villager to fall in right so we need to run this this redstone torch into this rs nor latch resetting the whole thing okay because at the moment it is off so nothing can n nothing can pretty much get ejected into the cell here because that the torch up there is off so that just means that the, the activator rail is not being powered and obviously nothing's going to get ejected because the activator rail not being powered normally on the original design i would have like an l shape come up here and then a redstone torch tower at the back here hooked in also hooked in here with the um the the two hoppers facing each other which is controlling the thing because when you I, I would have it hooked into two buttons there will be two buttons in here one for killing one for keeping but uh that's yeah that's not this one this this is different so we could i think we can just go ahead since we got the space now just torch it up we could go ahead and torch it up like this um and then we could have okay so we could have a redstone line running over here and we need to power that block see that block that i'm punching that's what we need to power that will turn off that torch allowing this torch to turn back on and you know do the whole cycle thing so what we need to do is do that break that one break that one oh not break that one put a torch in there which will reset the system right now so watch that torch turn on there you go it's torn, turned on right now um what we need to do Oh, that's not going to work, Data. That's not going to work. Because work. if we have a redstone... We need this torch at the back here to turn off. This needs to be turned off all the time unless the, you hit the button. So, we need to change. We need to invert this, which shouldn't be a problem. We just go ahead and put a torch there like that. Bob's your uncle. 
and that's all fixed. So now let's go. Let's go forcibly trigger. Let's go forcibly trigger the um, the cell. So the minecart, you know, oh, crikey, with this blooming roof, the minecart cart is cruising down, hits the activator rail, ejects that village around, and then we want the cell to turn off, which the cell just turned off like it's meant to. So if a minecart runs over here with anything in it, it won't eject because that's not being powered. Now. If we want to reset the cell, or we set, we want to send that villager that we just got, we're like, oh, you got crap trades, mate, I'm going to send you down to the torture dungeon and, and let Mr. Red poke you with a stick, you know, and then off he goes. Boy, he falls down, Ooh, splat. Um, and up there, should the, tor the uh, as you can see, the torch is now turned back on, allowing the next one to jump in, see? That's how pretty much simple it is. There you go. That is one complete cell, and that's actually a little bit smaller than our old cell. It's almost digital now. We don't have any clunky pistons up there, um, anything like that, anything like that. So remember, I've got to extend this over the rest. I've got to pretty much replicate this over and over again. I'll be starting right here for the next cell, and that's literally how it works. That's pretty much it. Hopefully I've explained everything right. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it is definitely different than the old version. The, this is version three and I'm going to try to do a version four. You know, it's going to evolve. This, this, these purifying stations that I build definitely evolve. This is the trading hall version of it. We got rid of some resources out of it. Fantastic. It's not even that heavy in resources, actually. Quite simple. All right, I think um, I'm going to continue building the rest of these cells, get these all hooked up. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching episode 58 of Minecraft Down Under. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like, and I'll catch you all later.